he realizes how hard it is to get to the Super Bowl. Now that he has crossed this bridge, I believe he is fully capable of doing it many times after. See, now, if you said less, Travis Kelsey would be calling you out at the next parade. Chris, <laughs> Dak Prescott and the Cowboys will have one playoff win next season, more or less. I'm going to go less. I mean, they've only got one playoff win in the three-year marriage between Dak and Mike McCarthy. If you consider the changes in the coaching staff, I don't think that staff is as good as it was when the season ended. And you also couple the fact that only one quarterback in all of football has a higher cap hit than Dak Prescott in terms of the percentage of cap. It's going to be hard to put the requisite talent around him in order for this team to go on a deep playoff run. Okay. Mike T, Aaron Rodgers will have one Super Bowl appearance left in his career, more or less. I'm taking less. Just way too much uncertainty of what he's going to do, Ryan. And this was a team, let's just remember, this past season, the Packers did not make the playoffs. They lost to Detroit in the last game. So, ironically, his best chance to make it back to the Super Bowl would be with Green Bay. However, there's so much uncertainty. Is he going to play, and where, where is he going to do it? Right, and right now he's doing it in Green Bay. He's still a Packer, so let's keep it in the NFC North, shall we? Because our next stop is Chicago. The Bears, they're on the clock. They have the number one pick in the draft. And presumably a franchise quarterback in Justin Fields. Or do they? Because there is so much talk right now about whether or not they will trade Fields and take a certain quarterback with the top pick. So let's go around the horn, guys. I want to get your thoughts on this. Mike, what would you do? Yeah, I, I would draft Bryce Young from Alabama. I would trade Justin Fields, a good quarterback. I, I've i seen Bryce Young. I've seen greatness. And I want to reset that clock for a rookie quarterback contract. We just talked about astronomical numbers, $50 million a year and, and more. And when you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars guys, they went out last year on Trevor Lawrence's rookie deal and signed a whole bunch of B players. I would do the same thing if I'm the Bears. And while I like Justin Fields, he has turned the ball over, for me, a little bit too much. He's only played 27 games and led the NFL in turnovers over the last two years. So when I look at the totality of the factors of getting a better player, a cheaper player, and the other player turns the ball over, I'm drafting Bryce Young and trading Justin Fields for a first-round pick and maybe more. Canty, what do you think? I think you keep Justin Fields and you trade the number one pick in stockpile picks. Now, a part of that math has to be the Chicago Bears asking themselves two questions. Do I have a quarterback that can be a difference maker? Yes, you do. He ran for over 1,100 yards last year and combined had 25 total touchdowns and he doubled his QBR from year one to year two. He's a guy that can be a difference maker, especially when you put the requisite pieces around him. The second question that you have to ask yourself is, what can you get for the number one overall pick? You got to find a team that's willing to do the dance to give you commensurate value for that pick, and I believe they will. Oh, since 2010, you're talking about eight drafts where multiple quarterbacks were taken in the top ten, I mean in the first round, and one has gone number one every single one of those times. So I think it's a situation where if you're the Chicago Bears, you're going to find a team that's going to give you a bevy of picks in order to move up to that spot and uh, take their quarterback of their choosing. So you keep Justin Fields, you use the draft capital that you get to put pieces around him. Yeah, maybe they got the Colts on line one. So Jeff, how do you think this all plays out? Lay out the factors for us here. Well, I think Candy makes a really good point about what you can get for that number one overall pick. And if, to his point, they can get a haul, then perhaps you do make the trade. But I think it is a significant conversation that will happen internally. That's the way NFL teams operate. They try to take the emotion out of the situation and ultimately make the decision with more objectivity. And in this scenario, yes, you do have the Colts and you do have the Texans as two potential teams that could vie for that spot. Are they willing to give up enough for you to, say, bypass picking a quarterback with that first overall pick uh, and trading it away, keeping Justin Fields? Or do you also kind of put out feelers to find out what you could get in return for Justin Fields? Again, I'm not saying they ultimately do it. They can be very happy with Justin Fields and go feel good about his future, but also do the homework necessary to find out what is the smart move here. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I, I, I think about this, and I think Justin Fields – was seventh in the league in rushing last year. Not among quarterbacks. Overall, wow. this is a guy who escaped the pressure behind a leaky offensive line, not a lot of offensive weapons, but at the same time, we're talking about possibly trading him. 
Why would you give up on Fields so soon? Take us through the mindset of a GM. Well, a couple reasons. When you look again at his turnovers, and this is from Hembo, but he has 140 sacks, fumbles, and interceptions. That's the most in the NFL, and he's only playing 27 games over two years. So that is a big concern. Like, will that get better? Yes. Like, we've seen Geno Smith get better, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. He can get better. However, that is a concern going back to his Ohio State days. And again, this isn't in as much as saying that Justin Fields won't improve, because he will. He improved when he went from Georgia to Ohio State in college. But when I have a chance to get somebody like Bryce Young, who I think has a chance to be really special, I don't want to bypass that opportunity, Ryan. The big if on Bryce Young, again, is his size. He is small, but he did go through the rigors of the SEC and play at a really high level. So to me, that's a chance worth taking. Yeah, they got to fix that line. They got to give him something to work with if they go in that direction because you got a 6'3", 228 Justin Fields who absolutely got crushed in Chicago over the last couple years. In March, and same for Aaron Rodgers. He can't be traded from the Packers until March 15th. So it is a situation where teams will certainly do all their due diligence, figure out who it is that they're going to target. But when you're still looking at this and you, you know, let's... If, I know Peter King didn't mention Derek Carr, but there's another quarterback who's available right now. If you decide you want to get a guy right now and not take the chance of waiting on Rodgers or Lamar Jackson, he could be your guy now. Ultimately, though, if you don't, you're playing a game of chicken with the rest of the NFL and these quarterbacks. Indeed you are. So, Chris, who should the Jets pursue more, Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson? Yes. That's the answer. You, you go after both of them, and you throw Derek Carr in there, too. I'm right there with Jeff Darlington. Beggars can't be choosers. Right now, the Jets are in an unenviable position because they don't have competent quarterback play in-house between Mike White and Zach Wilson. So it's a situation where you bait all the hooks, and you reel in whichever one bites first. If that ends up being Derek Carr, so be it. You have your quarterback. You have that certainty because guess what? If, Jet, if Jets general manager Joe Douglas and Jets head coach Rob Sala don't find themselves in the postseason in 2023, there's going to be somebody else making the decision about who's going to be the quarterback and all of the other consequential moves that the Jets need to make in 2024. When the head coach and the GM are in the hot seat, you got to solidify the most important position in all of team sports. And the sooner to do that, the sooner you do that, the better off you'll be. Mike, you know what keeps sticking with me about this quarterback carousel? You talk about Baltimore, right? We, we know that there's some kind of impasse going on with them and Lamar Jackson. We know that Derek Carr is now available right now. So if you're a GM down there, do you put a call in to Derek Carr and risk what that might be in terms of getting back to Lamar Jackson? You actually, you have to do that. It's part of your job responsibility because let's say you franchise Lamar Jackson and give him the traditional franchise tag. A team like the Jets, a team like Atlanta could give up two ones. Remember, Lamar Jackson's only 26 years old and been a league MVP. So just like we're looking at all options for another team, if you're the Ravens and you don't have Lamar Jackson, all of a sudden Derek Carr looks pretty darn good. So you do have to protect yourselves now, you want to do it in a very eloquent way. You want to be over-communicating with Lamar Jackson. I want to get into the specifics of exactly what we're doing. But while I'm trying to sign Lamar until he signed, you have to know what your optionality is, Ryan, because that may actually drive your walkaway price, like knowing what your options are. So it's delicate, but it's really part of your job. Wow. Can you imagine? I mean, that's what a tightrope they're walking down there in Baltimore as they try to get that deal done with Lamar. So, Canty, I see you're shaking your head. What are you thinking? Well, it's not a tightrope. It, it ultimately comes down to whether or not Lamar wants to play in Baltimore. And one of the things that we have to factor in is whether or not the relationship has soured in terms of how Eric DaCosta has handled this contract negotiation. This should have been something that the Baltimore Ravens took care of after Lamar Jackson finished his third season when he won that road playoff game down in Nashville. And that was a situation where you could have got it done and got to market before Dak Prescott's contract got done, before Deshaun Watson's contract got done, where you're talking about now all of the money in the new deal being fully guaranteed. So I think the Ravens created their own hurdles in terms of retaining an MVP caliber quarterback that's only 26 years old. Yeah, good point. Mike T, jump in. 
Yeah, right. I think Chris is making a really important point here. Look, they don't always work out as we saw in Philadelphia with Carson Wentz, but with the cap going up the way it is coming out of COVID with some of these newer deals, you're much better off going earlier rather than later, especially now with Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert coming down the pike, Jalen Hurts. So this is going to cost Baltimore a lot of money. The question is how much, let alone the intangible of having your best player, a league MVP, have this perception that you haven't taken care of him. And the prices keep going up and up for then. And then the, the whole discussion about will they fully guarantee 